tonight, God. There's a spirit of expectancy in the house, Father, for what you're going to do not only tonight, but for this weekend. We lift up your name tonight, Jesus.
will touch every heart in its place. We need a move, we need a fresh revival. Oh, new mindsets. Oh, we need a move. Oh, blow through this place, Jesus. We need your presence. We need your presence. Oh, we need a move. We need a move. Come on, church. We need a move. Come on, sing it out. Miracles happen. Here we go. Miracles happen. Come on. Coming in this room. Come on, it's here. Oh, let the church cry out. I don't think y'all want it. church to just uh, give our hearts a, a check mark that we completed something good for the week. We came in to give our hearts a check to make sure that we are in sync with the one who holds it all. And so tonight, Father, we ask that you would come in this place. God, you, you say that you are the God of miracles, and we believe it tonight. God, you say you're the healing God, and God, we believe that tonight, and, and you're the God of provision, and you, we believe that tonight. God, you're the comforter. You're the one that we run to in times of trouble. You're our strong tower. Your strength becomes perfect in our weak places, oh God, and so we run to you tonight, oh God, and we release our hearts from places that have beat it up and broke it and made it break into a million pieces. We give you our broken pieces tonight. And we ask, Lord, not just to put it back together, God, but to make it all brand new. I don't want just to have put back together hard, but I want to transplant. Is there anybody in here tonight that says, oh, God, position me for a heart transplant? Come on, if that's you, just shout amen and amen. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. There's nowhere else that we would rather be than in the house of the Lord, the place that we can come to and not be judged, the place that we can come to and find a community of love and find a community of acceptance. And it's important that we understand that God has called his church to be that for you. That you never have to feel alone or walk alone in this world. That he's called people that have been in the same places that you have been so that they could be there for you. Because he knew that he knows that we're human and that we're going to have uh, we're going to have the desire to have a physical presence. And when we have that physical presence of acceptance, then we position ourselves to receive what we don't see. And so his presence tonight, maybe we don't see it. But because we're in a place that there's physical presence of people that believe in the unseen, it gives us the opportunity to, to find hope, to find a place 
to position ourselves. Amen. Does that make sense tonight? Somebody needs to know that they're not alone. Somebody needs to know that they are loved. Somebody needs to know that they are accepted. Welcome to everybody tonight. I don't know if y'all are ready to have church, but I'm so ready to have church. I'm so ready for the word that God has put on my heart, the series of presents that God has given me, and I'm just excited to share it with you tonight. But before we do all of that, I want to welcome everybody online. I'm so glad that you are watching. If you have your phones out and you're taking notes, just share the video. That just helps us to spread the word, not only for your friends, but your family. Um, And so it's just important that we share Uh, this video. And then also, if you're here for the first time, lift your hand up high. The ushers will come around and give you a connect card. That just helps us to better serve you. And we want to bless you with a gift. If you're watching us for the first time, you can go to themastershouse.org and you can fill out a connect card there. We also have prayer requests. Um, We have, you know, there's been so many testimonies and things that God is doing in this season. You guys need to go to the website and fill that out so we can share it with the church because there's nothing more encouraging than to hear what God is doing for your neighbor. Come on, if he's doing it for your neighbor, that means he's down your row. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Y'all need to get, y'all need to get excited. Y'all need to get responsive. See, see, here's my point before. See, I need to, we get weary in a season of presence physical things. I need a box. I need to put presents up here because, and so we, if we just focused on the presence of God, then all of those other things, they just fall into place. Even if you just gave your child one gift, can I tell you that what would really matter is that you were just present. Get off your cell phone, make a meal for your family, Sit around. If you don't have a fireplace, sit around and, 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 and put the burners on your stove on. And let's pretend and roast some marshmallows. Oh, so y'all never been in that place where you don't have a fireplace and you don't live down the, the street of the Joneses. We used to just put our, our, put them on, put you, make it happen is what I'm saying. Be present in the midst of this, this season. Because I promise you, it's not about this. This will all fade. This will all go to waste. But the presence of God will never. It will, in, it will endure all things, all ways for eternity. Amen. Come on, let's get our best seat out tonight. Because we're ready to do this thing. If, if you uh, need an envelope, you can lift your hand. If you, uh, if you don't know about our uh, church, um, uh, what is it? An app, church app. I just kind of went blank here for a moment. The lights, the lights are blinding. Uh, it, you can uh, download that app and it helps to keep track of all of your giving. Um, you can give there. Come on, we're going to give our best seat tonight. Everybody's real quiet tonight. Come on, this is the time we get excited. We get excited to put a seat in the ground. Ooh, there's some people in here that know They got a fresh testimony about the goodness of God through their tithing, through their offerings. I'm telling you, there's there's a family in here that had a big part of of us getting this right here. And they they gave big faith. They stepped out in faith because I promise you they could have used that money for themselves and some necessities they may have had. But they stepped out in faith and connected with the vision of the church, they were part of the provision for the vision. And so that's, I'm telling you, I can't wait to hear all that God has done uh, through that seed. So can y'all see me tonight? Can there, is, are we good on the screens? Because last time Patrick was, Pastor was preaching in the dark, and we ain't about the dark. We all about the light. All right, y'all can see me good. Praise the Lord. Lift your seat up tonight. I've already wasted too much time. In the name of Jesus, oh, Father, God, you are good. God, let us put our seed in something with purpose, something that has purpose, God, something that has destiny, something that is eternal. God, I just thank you right now for the sowers, for the kingdom givers that you have sent to the master's house and all of those that are coming, God. I thank you, Lord, that this church will never lack. This church will never have to be in debt, God. It is because you speak through your people and they are faithful, 
And so, God, tonight I ask for a special blessing in this season over their lives through their giving. And, God, you know how to do it. You know what you need to do and how to do it, God. So I ask that you do it tonight. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right. Let me take a little sip here. Y'all like my cup? It matches the decor of the podium. Thank you to David Loa. He said he wanted us to match, so we're matching. For those of you that didn't know about the screen, what do you think? It's pretty cool, huh? If you didn't hear the story and all of that, you got to go listen to Wednesday night, and then you got to listen to Sunday morning. And then the question is, where y'all been? You need to be here at church. All right. Touch your neighbor and say it's going down tonight. Did you touch them? So y'all just... See, y'all like Moses, y'all struck the rock and God said, speak to the rock. Y'all need to get with it and get obedient. I said, touch your neighbor tonight and say, it's going down. Ooh, somebody got a beating. I ain't even trying. All right. Thank you, Ronnie. So much. Well, I'm excited about this word tonight. And uh, I know that God has a plan and a purpose for everybody that has shown up and is watching live stream um, just to hear uh, the series, this continued series on the presence, the presence, the most powerful presence of anything in this world, anything that can impact, that can touch, that can change, that can transform is the presence of God. But tonight I want to talk to you about God's presence gives us direction and protection. That's what I want to talk to you about tonight because when you have when you have direction and protection you find rest we need rest we need to have the peace of god we need to have the rest in our bodies in our minds and not be bogged down with the season or with a uh, situation that you may be going through in your life and so we have to have rest when we seek after God, we must be open to his direction for our lives. We have to be open and not open-minded. We have to be open-minded, open-hearted, not closed-minded and closed-hearted, but we have to be open when we are seeking the direction from God because most times it doesn't make sense or seem right or maybe it even God's direction may feel a little bit inconvenient. God, your timing is just not lining up with mine. What you're impressing upon me. But if you trust God, you will always find that his direction is always greater and more impactful when it comes to the kingdom of God. But I got to preface this message for you tonight before we dive in that we may have an idea of the direction we want our lives to go. Can, 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 I, can I get a witness tonight? No, nobody wants, so we got an idea of how our lives, you know, we're supposed to grow up, graduate high school, graduate from college, find us a guy or a girl, have 2.5 kids. I don't know how you have 2.5 kids, but maybe it's a dog. We'll consider them a half a point. And, you know, have this white picket fence and all of these things. See, we, we have an idea of the direction that we want our lives to go. We may be praying to go left, but the whole time God is telling us that we, no, 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 I, I want you to go right. And so you still have a decision to make at the crossroad. Are you going to go against what you feel is best for you? Or are you going to go in the direction that you feel God pressing upon you despite the uncomfortable feelings attached to it? Can I give you an example tonight that maybe you are planning or looking and praying for a direction to marry this woman or this man, but God says, no, 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 that's not who I have for you. So we need to be open-minded to the direction of God and not get so fixated on what we want for our lives, but releasing that into God's hands because he knows what's best for us. He sees the big picture. And so we, we have to move past what we feel, the uncomfortable feelings, which leads me to my first point tonight. 
Because when you walk with God and seek direction for your life, there will be times that you must take a risk. There'll be times that you may have to take a risk. Can I tell you, there's going to be a lot of times when you sell out to God, there's going to be a lot of times that you have to take a risk. Because in scripture, God's direction often meant physically leaving a location, but oftentimes it could mean doing something that you don't have full clarity in. Taking a risk was starting this ministry when we all we ever pastored were, were kids. This is taking a risk to leave our jobs. Well, he worked, I didn't, I took care of kids, whatever. But to leave a good paying job where we had everything that we needed, it was all taking, it was all about taking a risk. Every bit of it, the financial parts of it, the, the physical part of it, the knowledgeable part of it, there was all kinds of ways we were taking risks. And if you weren't careful, the enemy can talk you out of taking that risk. And if we had allowed the enemy to talk us out of that risk, then we would not be here tonight. But, but I think of the life of Abram in Genesis 12, 1 through 3, where God is calling him out and God tells him, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I'll show you. <laughs> right there. That would make me real sick. You're asking me to do what, Lord? Leave my country. Leave my peeps. And leave my father's house because my country represents something I'm familiar with. The culture and the food and all the comforts and desires that I might need. And the people are my connections, my confidants. And my father's house to me represents that I, I'm secure and, 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 and I know where I can go and run to if I need help. And he's asking him to leave those places. And then it says, I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Number one, you will always have the assignment. God will give you the assignment. And number two, it will always be followed up with a promise, a blessing. Anytime God has given you direction for your life, he will give you the assignment. But I promise you, there will never be a time that he will give you direction and it is not followed up with some kind of promise or blessing attached to it. In fact, the promise is the blessing. But here's this promise that he tells Abram that his descendants would be more numerous than the stars above him. But we can agree that this type of call over Abram's life is considered a great risk. It is a great risk. People actually do this still to this day. When God says go, they go. But see, some people, they have a hard time. They, they, they discern what God is saying, but they're afraid to move. And we're going to talk about that tonight because it takes, it took courage for Abram, Abram because he had to leave his father and his relatives. And this was a time of the patriarchs. One's identity was tied to his family. And while he was alive, the patriarch was the head of the generations that followed. So he had an, an assignment. He had a job. Abram was told, leave your relatives and your father's house. Basically, he was divorcing himself from his kinsmen, his blood relatives, during a time when one had to rely on these people for support, protection, and companionship. Abram responded to the call when he was 75 years old. He was hardly a spring chicken. Eager to move out on his own, he had ties to his family that were firmly established over the course of many decades. 
75 years is a lot of decades. Some of y'all might be 75 or getting close, and you have a lot of decades on your belt, under your belt. And there's a lot of wisdom there, too. But he left his family, his bloodline, so that he might become a friend of God, the friend of God. For Abram, following God's calm and entering into the great unknown, this right here is the place, the unknown, the place that not a lot of people want to have to face because there's, there's people that like to have the blueprint and the plan. And like Pastor Francis, I love it when she gets her sermons together. She, she tells me, I've already got 2,500 words on my sermon. And I'm thinking, how many? I don't ever count my words. But they're planners. There are these personalities. You have this particular personality, and you're not one that likes to walk in an unknown place. You like to have the details. Is there anybody in here tonight that says, I can't move unless I have the details? Can I tell you tonight that you're going to have a hard time if you don't release that? Because you have to walk in order to grow in a place of the unknown. But it meant that he had to uproot. He had to travel through the desert and journeying to unfamiliar places. He had to trust God for provision, direction, and protection. And can you imagine Abram's emotions when he heard God's voice? The fear, the all of the questions that he may have had. Come on, he was a man. Can you imagine that? But he faithfully responded and he impacted generations to come. His decision to follow God led to the lineage of Jesus. And we know the impact that Jesus had on the world. Amen. But let me ask you a question tonight. Has God ever asked you to take a risk? This may be changing jobs, starting a business, stepping into a leadership role, uh, maybe even sowing the biggest seed you've ever thought you could. Think about your feelings, the feelings and in and, and that process, the fear and, and having to overcome those things because the enemy would love nothing more than to talk you out of taking that risk. And what, what did we say earlier that when there's an assignment, when there is uh, uh, something that's going to uh, assignment that's going to cause you to take a risk, what follows it? A blessing. And so the enemy don't want you blessed. He don't want you to increase. He doesn't want you to grow. He doesn't want you to receive the truth. He doesn't want you to stand in a place of clarity. He wants you to stay in a place of confusion, of doubt, of fear. That's where he wants you. But did your decision to follow God's invitation impact other people? Because it's not always about us. Did it change your outlook on the faithfulness of God? Did your faith grow when you took that risk? These are all the reasons why we follow the direction of God. But then we have the, wait, I, I, I don't want to do that. The going the opposite direction. Remember the lefts? We want to go left. And God says, go right. Right. Let's talk about that tonight because y'all are real quiet. Are y'all getting this tonight? I just want to make sure y'all are getting this tonight because not everyone in the Bible is willing to respond to God's disruptive call or inconvenient timing like Abram. Because one example we all, some of us have heard, and maybe you haven't, is the story of Jonah. And God told him to go to Nineveh, that great city, and speak out against it. But instead of packing up his things and going to Nineveh, Jonah went in the opposite direction to get away from God. Can I tell you tonight that you can get away from God? You can try. You can try to get away from God. You can do your best to run from God. Many times, many years, I ran from God. But can I tell you that the strife and the, and the, the turmoil and the trouble and all of the things that I got into because I ran from God. We want to save ourselves from having to continually, continuously 
uh, find ourselves in those same patterns. We want to break that so we can't run from God. Jonah's response reminds us that we don't always like or agree with where God is leading us. You don't have to like it. You don't have to agree. You just have to be obedient. If you say that God is your God, you have to be obedient. But he fled to a boat, was tossed off during a tumultuous storm, and ended up being swallowed by a big fish. And I was thinking, I was reading the story just to refresh myself, and I started thinking about the men that were on the boat. And uh, these aren't even in my notes, but I just felt that God just dropped that on me to say that, you know, when you are going against the direction of God, you're going in the opposite direction of God. It, it tends to uh, pour out on the people that are around you. And you start to kind of carry a little bit of a spiritual stank is what I like to call it. And so these men were like, look, you know, they had their, they served their little gods. But, but Jonah served the God. And they recognized that something was off. And they recognize something's going on. And who is the cause of all of this crazy windstorm and, and, and waves and everything kicking up around this boat? They thought they were going to die. And they finally realized, like, hey, you know, you're, you are causing us to possibly lose our own lives. Like, what are you doing? Who is your God? And he finally re reveals who his God is. And they're like, oh, you're not even these guys that weren't living for God recognized that this man was going in the wrong direction. And so they didn't sit there and try to talk to him. They didn't sit there and try to convince him. They kicked his butt out and they said, Lord, please don't kill us for throwing over your man that's not being obedient. But through all of that, they, they, they uh, cried out to God and God became their God. And so even though we walk sometimes in places that are in the opposite of, dire of the direction that God has for us, there's still a moment that we can impact people. God will use that, uh, your, the situation, or, you know, he'll, he'll use it to impact people to recognize that there's something not right. You know, this person is acting out of character. This person isn't normally who they are. And, and many times... It'll impact other people to say, you know what? I need to get my life right. I need to do something different in my life. I, I, I want the blessing of God, if that makes sense. Amen? So here's the thing. God chose Jonah to play a pivotal role in the people's repentance and forgiveness. What would have happened to these people if Jonah had stayed hiding in, in the belly of the, of the fish? Everybody knows he was swallowed up. He stayed there for three days in the belly of a fish. Uh, what would have happened to these people if he had stayed there or, or you know, was just continued to walk in his disobedience? What would have happened to these people? But God's direction for our lives isn't always just about us. Like I said, there's a bigger picture that we can't see. It's, it not only impacts people along the way, this is what I was trying to say earlier, but a blessing will always be attached to it for you because of your willingness to to be obedient. So in the midst of that, and what I forgot to say is that Jonah realizes, I got to be obedient. I got to get this right. There's a bigger picture. He had a come to moment. And so that was what my point is. I'm, I'm trying to help you see tonight that maybe you're going in a different direction and maybe you feel the strife in your life, but you have to have a come to moment with God and say, you know, I know I'm not going in the direction that you've called me to, but help me, Lord, right now to have that come to moment, to have that realization that I've got to be obedient. I want the blessing more than I want to do what feels good. I want the blessing more. So there are times that I've been up against what I feel to do versus what I know God wants me to do. I've been up against those places many times. My husband has. We've all experienced that. The fears, the insecurities, always feeling like you're, you're battling, you know, your, your confidence or whatever it is. Sometimes I just could not shake those feelings but I was still obedient to the call. I would get up here with shaking knees and trembling 
and, and, and trying to walk that thing out because I wanted to be more obedient than I, I wanted to please how my, my flesh felt. I didn't want, you know, we, none of us want to be shaking and in fear and, and, and feeling insecure in front of a bunch of people staring at me or at your job or wherever the place is. No one wants to feel that. And so we tend to shrug back because we want those feelings to stop. But where would we be if we always stayed in that place? Where would I be if, if I stayed in that place? I had to walk it out. Despite how I felt, the trembling and the shaking and, and my insecurities. Can I tell you, I had a lot of insecurities. I had a lot of reasons why I would try to convince pastor that I couldn't get up here. That I, you know, I just couldn't do it. I don't know the Bible well enough. And I don't know these things. And I don't know how to pray. And I don't know how to talk to people. I don't have elegant speech. And I don't have big words and all of these things that I would use to talk myself out of it. And the enemy had a field day. And there were, I'm telling you, there was a lot of time wasted because I shrugged back because I wanted those feelings to stop. See, you might be faced with that, that somebody you're feeling to pray for or somebody that you're feeling to minister to or to mentor or to counsel in out in, outside these walls and your insecurities are, are really playing you and you're having a hard time. Can I just get a church to respond tonight? Because I feel like I'm walking through some mud and I'm struggling a little bit tonight because I don't know if you're getting it or you understand. And so if I have a church that responds, then there's something that shifts the atmosphere. There's something, the, the anointing begins to shift the atmosphere because there's a lot of people that are sitting in a chair comfortable and God has called you to do some great things, but you'd rather stay in a chair and sit there because you don't want to walk it out shaking and trembling. You don't want to walk it out. You want to sit in a chair and be comfortable and just greet all your life. Can I tell you tonight that maybe God doesn't want you to just greet all your life. Maybe he's calling you to, to do greater things. And I know, in fact, there's many in here that God has called to do greater things, but you haven't done the greater things because you want to stay in a place of comfort. And I'm telling you that the direction of God for your life is for a greater purpose. And it's not just to keep you in a place that you're always comfortable. See, y'all making me preach hard tonight, but I'm telling you that God says enough is enough. Get out of your seat, get out of your comfort, and follow me so that I can show you some things, so that I can teach you some things, so that I can remove what you're feeling because it's not of me. It's not of me. Those feelings and those emotions are not of me. I didn't call you to come in here and be silent. I called you in here to be trained up and empowered. I called you in here to become a soldier for the kingdom of God. Not to come in here and just be fed and be fed and be fed until you decide you want to grow up. There is a greater, is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? Is your neighbor saved? No. Is your mama saved? No. Is your, is your children saved? Are they living for God? No. There is a cause. And so I want you to hear God tonight. There is a cause, and if you can agree with me that there's a cause, then I'm telling you tonight, the promise will follow the direction that God's trying to take you. Woo! I'm telling you, get out of your seat and go the direction that I'm telling you, Jonah. Because if you go the direction that I'm telling you, Jonah, there's going to be a whole city that gets spared because you opened your mouth and you were obedient. Because God had every reason to go and wipe them clean. He had every reason to, to tear that city down. They were wicked. They were wicked, but he used one man. And if you think that your life can represent something so powerful to impact the kingdom of God, I am here to tell you that is a lie from the enemy. It takes one, the power of one to say, God, here I am, choose me. And so Jonah went, kicking and screaming, but he went. And he delivered the word that God gave him. 
and he spared the entire city. They repented, and they asked for forgiveness, and God changed his mind, and he didn't wipe them out. But as we wade and wallow through the waters of discernment, we have to discern what God is trying to do. That's the hard part. God, help me to know. Anybody just feel like, well, you know, Pastor, you're, you're preaching at me, but I just don't know. I just don't know. Can I tell you how? Is you have to be in the presence. There is no if, ands, or buts about it. If you're going to follow after God, you have to be in the presence. The, nobody taught me how to discern in the church. Nobody taught me how. I had to learn through the presence and the Holy Spirit coming upon me. He taught me how to discern what God had for my life, the direction that God wanted me to go. That's where I learned. I learned how to pray in the presence. I learned how to discern in the presence. And I learned how to be obedient, subjecting myself to the presence. But we are reminded that our decision, our decisions are an invitation. It's such an honor and a privilege to have an invitation from God to do something for his kingdom, for his namesake, to be a part of his great plan. So we can't see it as something that is so, uh, it's inconvenient. God, that's such a slap in the face of God. It's an honor to receive an assignment. It's an honor to receive a position. You have to get to a place where you don't even care about the blessing. I just want to do what pleases God. I just want to touch as many people for his name's sake. So instead of staying in, a, in panic and confusion, we can, we can trust God to be faithful because he is faithful helping us to take risks and courageously overcoming our fears. That's what holds us back. Overcoming our fears allows us to run freely. There's no, you know, the first steps are going to be hard. The first steps you're going to be shaking. The first steps you're going to be looking back like, oh, my God, am I making a difference? Am I making a difference? Am I really doing this? And then all of a sudden you just get this sprint in you and you start running, spiritually running. I'm not talking about the physical, but I'm talking about the spiritual. And as you seek after and subject yourself to the presence of God, there's a sprint that comes on in the inside of you. And it's like, God... Who is it today? Who is it today? What's the word today, God? What are you saying to me today? There's some of you ain't asked God what you're saying to me today. Some of you haven't asked him what you have for me. Is this the man I'm supposed to marry? Is this the woman I'm supposed to be with? Some of you need to start asking God, is this what you have for me Woo, we can begin to see our lives in relation to the whole body of Christ and recognize God leading us to make a uniquely valuable contribution that unites us and brings life. It brings life to people. It brings life to the church. It brings life to this dark world. One person at a time, it becomes a domino effect when God can take a remnant of people and, and then be sold out. They can get to a place where they're so sold out that they're willing to receive any assignment because they see it as an honor. It's not an inconvenience. Whew. While we take risks and do what we don't want to do. Did you hear me? I said, while we take risks and do what we don't want to do, what our flesh doesn't want us to do, we find that God's direction will always bring his divine protection. And I'm almost done tonight. Isaiah 54, 17 says, But in the coming day, no weapon turned against you will succeed. You all heard the scripture that says, No weapon formed against me shall prosper. But I wanted to use 
this uh, particular NLT version so that you could read what some people never quote. They always say, no weapon formed against you shall prosper in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. But the next part, really, God just highlighted this to me. And he says, you got to tell the people this. Because he says, these benefits, y'all know what benefits are? Y'all understand what benefits are, right? These benefits are enjoyed by the servants of the Lord. Their vindication will come from me. I, the Lord, have spoken! Exclamation point. What does that mean? What does that mean? It means that there are benefits that come with God's protection, with God's direction for our lives. I've said that earlier, but it says that we can enjoy them, that we don't have to worry about a weapon forming because there will be weapons that form. But he promises right here that it will not prosper. It will not prosper over our lives. It says that we... If we don't let it prosper, because how many of you know we can let it prosper if we want to? The enemy doesn't even have to try to make it prosper half the time. He just sends the assignment out, and we allow it to prosper in our minds and in our heads. And so he says right here, and it just tells me so clearly that if we can silence every voice raised up that accuses us, then that must mean we're not worried about the weapon forming. We're not worried. Did you hear me? I said, we're not worried about the weapon forming because God's word says that he's my vindicator. So whatever may try to come against me as I walk this thing out trembling and shaking, I don't have to worry because God says he's got my back. God has got my back. He's got my past. He's got my future. He's got my present. He's got everything I need. Everything. But you can find rest in knowing the benefits are to be enjoyed because no matter what may come, God says your vindication will come from me. God's divine protection is foolproof. It's solid. It doesn't matter what you do or what you encounter. He will make it his mission to protect you. Do you hear me, church, tonight? He will make it his mission to protect you. When you're walking in the place of the unknown, when you don't have the plan, you don't have the blueprint, you don't have everything in front of you, he promises that if you walk that thing out, you will enjoy the benefits. You will enjoy it. But as you look back on situations in your life as a believer, Can you recall times when someone intervened and helped you avoid committing that sin or going down a dark path? Can you think of that particular time in your life? Maybe the protector was a parent, a teacher, or a Christian friend. I know I've had a lot of them become my protector. You might not have realized it at the time, but God was working providentially The providence of God, he was working through that protector to keep you from harming yourself. He was working through that person, the protector of your soul, of your life, of your direction, your protection. He was working through it. How thankful we ought to be that God would intervene. Because I I think about it, when you're on... When, when you're, you're walking out the plan of God, I, I can't imagine reading my Bible and knowing what God did for the children of Israel and how he, he pulled them out of slavery and how he walked them through uh, the wilderness and how he provided. Like, I can't imagine that the Bible is any different than today. Because if he did it there and he provided for them, and he made sure that they had everything they needed, then why do I have to be afraid of being in the unknown? Why do I have to fear uh, the walking in a specific direction that makes me feel uncomfortable? Why would I think for a moment that God is not going to provide? 
Why do I think for a moment that he's not going to protect me? So we can release ourselves in our minds and our hearts to know that it doesn't have to be a scary thing. It might be for a moment, but if you're like me and you walk that thing out, all of a sudden the shackles fall. The chains begin to get loosed. And you realize that you're not afraid because you know the word of God is truth. It is truth. It's foolproof. It is the truth of God, the providence of God, the, the protection of God will never fail you in your life. Everything else, their people will fail you. Your boss will fail you. Sometimes your pastor may even fail you. But the providence of God will never fail you. It will never fail you. Because there's nothing like finding right rest in Christ, not rice, but there is nothing like finding rest in Christ, not getting stressed or worked up about every little thing that comes your way. He truly has your back. See, your, your mind is at rest. There's no turmoil. Your heart is at rest and your soul is at rest because he says, I, the Lord, have spoken. It's not a period. It's an exclamation point. Do y'all know what an exclamation point? It's a fact. It's solid. It's done. It's set. It's, it, y'all know the definition of X. Somebody, if there's their teacher in here, it's serious when somebody says it with an exclamation point. You know it, they mean business. Is that right, Marissa? She's a teacher. It means that, that's it. I don't know how else to say it. What's that? That's right. All right. I thought somebody threw me some, some wisdom out. All right. In closing tonight, because I, I want to get everybody out of here in time, let's just stand to our feet as, as I close. Sorry for all the sniffles. We all got allergies this week. This weather is something else. We have to know that living for God means we grow when he leads us to take risks. We truly do grow. Did you hear me? Some of you have been dying to grow. I want to grow, God. I want more of you. I can hear people praying that. God, I want more. I want more. And then when God brings more, you're like, ooh, I don't like that. Not that one. I don't want that, God. Send me something else. But in order to get to that something else, you have to take that. It's a, it's a process. The assignment will always have a promise or a blessing attached to it. It's not always about us because we have a greater, because God has a greater purpose. So it's not always about us and how we feel. Once you're saved, it becomes about those that are not. And so we have to get out of our selfish ways when God has already come into our lives and we've claimed him as our Lord and Savior in that moment. Yes, God can do all things and he can still work in your life and still use you to impact other people. God is not bound by we got to walk these little, you know what I'm saying? God is bigger so he can work on you and still use you. Did y'all hear me? He can, he can work on you and still use you. Well, I'm not ready. I still don't really know the Bible. Can't tell you I'm still learning the Bible, so stop using that excuse. Come on, we're all growing. We're all we got to get focused. I hear that all the time in the church. I'm just not I don't think I'm ready for that. I don't think I can, I'm ready. Mm, my life's still kind of a mess. But I like what Pastor Liz said to me tonight. He said, "You said what was it that do you remember what you said?" That God doesn't call the equipped, which we say here often. God, yeah. He, he doesn't the call called. the qualified. The qual yeah. He qualifies the called. Yeah. Can I can I just tell you tonight that you're all called? I put I love when I put her on the, on the spot. Then after service, she's like, "Why'd you do that?" Because you're the sarcastic queen, and I can. All right, I love her. Understand, going against the direction of God will cause hardships because it's not of Him. You're doing your own thing. When you're going against what you know that God has for you, 
the enemy will send people to try to convince you to go another direction. He will use people to bless you, and the enemy will use people to curse you. And I'm telling you, you have to be mindful when you know that God has set you in a path and has put you in a specific direction. I know I made it sound like it was going to be all peaches and cream, but I'm telling you that in God providing and all of that, and that is truth. But don't think for a moment why the Bible says don't look to the left or the right because there's always going to be some whisper. Oh, you don't want to be at that church. Oh, you don't want to go and, and talk to her. She's not going to receive. She's got a hardened heart. She's a sinner. Or whatever in things that the these you know people that the enemy will use in your life to get you off course. The truth is you need to stand firm in what God has told you and what God has called you to. You have to stand firm and continue to walk it out despite what you feel and despite what you hear. But what did we just read? It says that we will be able to silence the accusations or the lies and, and live on the benefits and enjoy the benefits. Amen? And his divine protection will follow you, not allowing any weapon to prosper so that you can enjoy his benefits while he vindicates you through it all because it's all for his glory. Amen? Come on, let's lift our hands tonight and pray. In the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you for this word tonight. God, I thank you for the truth, God, that you reveal the truth to the hearts of your people. And maybe this came off a little harsh, God. Maybe it came off a little too passionate. But God, I felt in my heart tonight that you were just trying to break through the noise. That you were trying to break through the noise of, of the whispers the whisper campaigns and, and the, the things that the enemy will try to cause your people to miss it. And so tonight, God, I'm passionate about the people, God, the people that you don't want them to miss it. You don't know, you no longer want them to be going in the opposite direction, God, but you want them to go in the ways of, of what you have called them to, God. And so tonight, I ask, Lord, that as they silence the voices and the noise, they would begin to learn how to discern the direction for their lives. God, so that blessing can flow. So that, God, they can be raised up, God. So they can grow and stre be stretched, Lord. And, and win souls for your kingdom. God, let them be the power of one. Let it be a domino effect in this church. Let it be so much more about what happens out there than it does in here. Because we're all saved in here, God. But out there, there's a world that's dying and going to hell. So help us, God, to understand that we have a cause. And tonight, God, we receive that understanding. If you're with me tonight and you receive that understanding, say, God, here I am. Use me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Woo! Come on, let's give them a victory shout. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oh, we love you, God. We thank you for your presence, oh God. We thank you for the cause. We thank you, Lord, that we respond. We're teachable, God. We thank you for your presence most of all. God, let us find every tool that we need in your presence, in Jesus' name. God bless you, church family. I love you. We'll see you here Sunday at 1030.